picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. He's an ugly little spud, isn't he? I think he can hear you right. Welcome back, and I mean welcome back. It's been too long since I've been working on models. I uh, had to take a break last week, which you no doubtedly watched with rapt attention as we went to the state fair. Well, the fair continues this weekend. It's uh, the last weekend of the fair. It's uh, I'm recording this Friday night uh, to put it together Monday when I upload it. You know that, that, that old thing. And actually, uh, might not might not upload till Tuesday this week. Anyway, um, we'll worry about that later. The, uh, the agenda for things to make uh, this week. Um, getting back to the pod. Hopefully going to finish it this weekend. Just have some minor uh, touch-ups inside. And then the black accent painting on the outside. And the decals. And we're almost ready to go. There's a little bit of body work I need to do on it yet. And I'll do that tonight so that I can get another coat of white on it tomorrow. Uh, the hopper continues apace. I've got the uh, lights ready to wire up. I've got the uh, interior kind of figured out. Uh, do some more exterior work on it this week while I wait for some uh, some details to show up. And the new big exciting project, because you know I can't go. When I, I'm the ADD modeler, I'm sorry, Dirk, I've taken your, your line. Um, I change fancies really quickly. And something came up this week that I was able to procure for myself that uh, immediately uh, appealed to the life-size uh, collector in me. So uh, I'm going to try to show you a bit of that tonight. That's, that's why I am freshly showered, in case you're asking, uh, because I was cutting and sanding resin um, all night or most of the evening and uh, got dust flying everywhere. I had the mask on, but dust gets everywhere. It gets in the hair. It gets on the clothes. So you just have to shower after that's done. But uh, it's no small project. I'm kind of going into the theme of, of life-size green guys. I mean, I did Yoda, life-size green guy, and now I've got another life-size or death-size, if you're more, uh, if you want to be more accurate, green guy that is kind of in the other room, and he is all over the other room because he is so friggin' huge. Um, I'm going to see if I can get it on camera. Uh, without having to resort to aerial photography. So let's take a look. And here he is, uh, or more accurately, here his body is. Um, yes, this is the ugly little spud, the onion head, uh, commonly known as Slimer from Ghostbusters. Uh, this is a reportedly one-to-one -one life size uh, or death size I'm going to keep saying that, I'm sorry. Uh, taken off of an original sculpt of the prop used in the movie. So uh, what you're not seeing, obviously, are the arms and the teeth, which have to be uh, put into this huge cavity. Ha! <laughs> teeth cavity. See what I did there? Anyway, uh, first thing I need to do is to uh, make a uh, reinforcement point at the top there so that I can take so that it'll take all the weight I don't want this to collapse under its own weight or to poke a hole through the this is I guess aluminite aluminite resin but um, it's solid enough but there are some weak spots in it so uh, I got to build up an armature and use some Bondo and much like I did uh, with the Kirk and Spock puppets only on a much larger scale I need to secure that wood and uh, that uh, steel rod with some Bondo, and that's going to happen tomorrow, which is nice because the weather is really going to cooperate. It's supposed to be quite nice. So there is him from the side. So he's uh, uh, going to be a large and looming presence, but let's get back to the uh, models at hand, which is this guy and getting some sense out of the uh, hopper. And this is the starter pack for the paint. This is a tub o green acrylic paint. This is um, two liters of green paint. That might get everything done at least once. It'll be a good base color. Okay, part of uh, getting back to work is remembering where it was exactly it was I left off. And one of the things that I need to do is to see where we're sitting right now with our pod. 
Um, what I need to do is to touch the red paint that's on the patch inside there and I'm going to touch up the inside of this um, earmuff where the red needs to be cleaned up. So that's this, that's the first job. And voila! I have uh, gone around this one last time with a little bit of spot uh, glazing putty and I've touched up the black in here and I've touched up the silver on the floor and the red on the inside of this earmuff and the white in here. So um, basically we're getting this ready to um, to be uh, sitting overnight so that tomorrow I can uh, do the sanding and some last minute touching and get the last coats of paint on it. Well it's Saturday evening and after spending all day playing with Slimer like I should not have been and not doing this uh, I am ready to paint white over the last bit of putty that I had been touching and I've painted like the inside of the door and uh, some trim pieces but uh, this is all ready for the last coating of white on it and then once that is dry and I think before I turn in for the evening I will hit it with the polar white the duplicolor polar white and then tomorrow uh, maybe we'll get this black painted and or touched up it's been painted underneath her get that touched up and maybe get some decals on might not get the final uh overcoat or the final uh gloss coat over top of the decals but at least we'll get to get to the decals that's the goal okay we're darn close now um i'm just doing some light sandings and uh hitting the white over top of the uh, white paint over top of the putty and uh at this point I'm going to let this dry for a few hours and then right before the end of the evening I will put a light coat of the uh, polar white over the whole deal. Meanwhile out here in the other room uh, things are progressing on the onion head, the uh, little spud, the ugly guy. Getting my old friend the uh, great stuff gap filler. Last time I used it was on the gremlin to fill in the body cavity and I'm using the same thing here because there are big gaps in the mouth that I need to fill in and uh, try to get this gum line to sit right at the edge of the of the lip now I'm going to clean all that up and I'm going to go back over it with Bondo putty to smooth it down right now it's just kind of sitting in position and if you can see back up into the throat here I've got to uh, get his uppers in place which is what these are these are the uppers and I'm trying to uh, beef up the top of that because there really isn't any meat to hook on to um, once you get inside there so basically all I've got is trying to do this with one hand sorry all I've got is the area no I'm not going to do that because it's going to screw something up but those are the top teeth and they've got to mold themselves up in there so uh, hopefully this will all make sense my goal is still to get these in maybe tomorrow morning I guess and get the arms on and maybe get a coat of primer on the whole thing by the end of the weekend we'll see okay ladies and gentlemen friends and neighbors boys and girls of all ages it is time um, I am really happy with the final white finish on this pod. Um, it's nice and clean and bubble free and wave free and uh, I'm ready to take all the masks off I have had on it that have been masking the black areas and going back in and retouching the black and then I've got to do some silver highlights on some things and then we'll be time for decals. We may get this wrapped up today. We probably won't get the final finishes on it because I like to let decals dry in for at least a day before I put anything over them. But uh, we will get this fairly well knocked out. We might even get it wired onto the base. That could be asking for too much, but let's see. Okay, the masks are off and we've done pretty darn good for ourselves. Uh, now I'm going to go back in and paint in 
uh, most notably that area with the black but I'm going to be touching up the edges of things and basically cleaning them up um, I was prepared to replace all of the clear bits uh, the clear uh, uh, spotlight covers I've got one that stayed but the rest of them came off with the masks and here they are and really that's just a matter of cutting some new clear styrene no biggie well I got the iconic window painted in and that was nowhere near as easy as it looked um, getting this edge just right uh, is a trick and I'm gonna have to go back in with a little bit of white and kinda touch it up back you know touch it back a little bit um, because of those ridges it's easy enough to paint the ridges but you have to paint the edge the front edge of those ridges and uh, if you don't it looks ragged so to make a clean black line you gotta paint it out just a little bit beyond those ridges and um, that's not an easy trick like I said I'm going to go back in with the white and touch it kind of refine it backwards a little bit but let's do the sides now they should be a lot easier especially this one since it pops off and here you can see the difference this is the uh, the earmuff that has been cleaned up and edges uh, sharpened and here is the one where the edges have not been sharpened and you can see like on the top edge there the white is still showing and these areas around the edges aren't as defined and then back to the good one and the front window yay well welcome back it is Sunday Sunday afternoon and as many of you know I'm sure I've gone on an ad nauseum uh, I work for the Department of Agriculture here in North Carolina. So over the few year, over the years that I've done that, I've picked up quite a few farm sayings, and you'll see, you'll hear them peppered throughout my reports. Um, most importantly, are two things: being the concept of being in the short rows, which comes from a a time when if you had an irregular field that you were planting, you would use your tractor to plow. The long rows and then you know you'd work yourself down to the short rows which meant you were almost done and I use that a lot I talk about being in the short rows of a project that means I'm almost done and the second thing is making hay while the sun shines which is just a time management thing um, there are obviously things you can do um, in the morning and the evening that you can't do in the afternoon or things that you can do in the afternoon conversely that you can't do in the morning or the evening one of which is use loud equipment uh, using tools that make a lot of noise you don't want to do that early morning or late evening you want to keep that in the middle of the day and the other thing is uh, stuff that has to dry or stuff that may smell um, you want to do that in the afternoon while you can uh, you while the sun shines obviously making hay while the sun shines so what we're going to do is um, do a, a slight diversion from the pod which is on the table here I, I am in the short rows of the pod it is almost done but what I need to do to effectively manage my time since I have a very limited amount of time on the weekends is to uh, wheel uh, Slimer out into the carport while the sun is shining and put a coat of primer on him uh, that's going to do two things it's going to show up all the flaws of which there are many that I need to see it's white right now which is tough to gauge where your uh, seams are and where your things that need to be uh, uh, either filed down or sanded better and uh, so I'm going to put a coat of gray on that because I'm going to use up most of a can of gray primer just on the thing it is huge um, so Got to do that while I can do it outside, in the air, better circulation, and uh, better drying. And then once uh, once I get it all primed and put together, I can paint it in the house because I'm going to be painting with acrylics, things that don't have odors, and uh, using actually a regular brush so there'll be no spraying until I get down to the airbrush details, which uh, won't be happening this week, so I'll worry about that when it happens. So... I need to move him out to the carport because he's just too big to do anything inside and spray a good coat of primer on him and while that's drying and before I do the second coat I can come back inside and work more on the pod of which the rows are very short so let's get some stuff set up and uh, we'll see where we go from there and here we are in, in this Halloweenish setting this is just the result of me neglecting my yard for the last few weeks 
But uh, I'm out here in the carport. See, there's the car over there. And uh, it's in front of the world's cheapest uh, shower curtain. Just hung up there to provide some sort of backdrop and blocking and a spray catcher. So let me get some gray paint on this guy. I am throwing every primer I have in the book at this thing uh, just to get it coated. I've done some gray and ran out of gray. I went over it with white and I'm doing some red inside obviously. And this self etching primer which is green in nature is going to go over it last. And what it's doing is the imp very important job of showing me where the flaws are. Now I knew there was a lot of seam work that needed to be taken care of. But you can see some pits and holes and bubbles and things like that that need to be taken care of that I couldn't really see on the white vinyl. Here's a hole that has to be patched and uh, some goofies this there that has to be patched. And this has the seam has to be uh, trimmed up. And just some pock marking and acne and things like that that need to be addressed. And I hope you can see the, uh, the value in getting some primer on this beastie. Um, I emptied practically every can of primer I had in the house I've emptied on this guy. And you can really see now that it's showing up things like this in the casting that needs to be remedied. Plus it also gets me closer to having a, the uh, sandable primer, or the uh, self-etching primer being green in nature. Um, it gets me closer to the final colors and I can get a better idea of what he's finally going to look like when all is said and done. But uh, it shows me what flaws are uh, are willing to be ignored or can be ignored and what ne when things need to be addressed. And more importantly, when I put the gray putty on it, it will show up against it. So we're going to let this sit for an oh, hour or so and I'm going to go back in and work on the pod some more. And then we're going to come back out and uh, do some filing and some sanding and some grinding and try to maybe get these arms attached. And I still have to put in his uppers because right now he looks kind of strange with only his bottom jaw in. There's a face only a mother could love. No, I am not trying to give a, uh, a, uh, an injection before uh, doing any dental work, but I am putting some uh, clear epoxy down in here to smooth out this rough area. There, I hope that looks appropriately gummy. And gummy in the sense of a gum, not a... Uh, ooh, that's hot. It's just, you can tell when that starts to go off, boy, it heats up. I may have to cut a bit of that off. That's too much there. But it's uh, filling in here nicely. It smooths out that... Uh, rough hewn area and it's about three o'clock on a sunday afternoon and this is as far as i am gonna get with him today uh, i've got the arms on i've got some uh, bondo in some cracks uh, i've got the seams all bondoed up uh, the mold lines i've started working on i've got the the bottom teeth in I've got to put that top jaw in today or I've got to put it in there it is I don't think it's going in today uh, but the arms I wasn't expecting to do today but I went ahead and did them because things were going well and that's sometimes how you have to play it it's uh, uh, this is that stage that I I warn you about is the oh my god how ugly is this is it ever going to be look good again this is about as bad as it should get he said, hopefully, uh, knowing that I can uh, start prettying up from here. But uh, those seams have to be sanded. I'll probably use some epoxy sculpt to put in new folds of flesh over top of things. Bondo is not the best medium to uh, try to scribe detail into. So uh, I'll probably put some, once I get this all sanded down, I'll probably put some epoxy sculpt. To cover up uh, or to, to blend in muscle fl or fat flabs and things like that so uh, here's where we be and now the uh, most important question the question that has been on my mind all day is this going to fit back in the house uh, my doorway is only so wide so uh, i'm assuming 
that that is the narrowest profile straight that way so this will be a good test because if it fits through this doorway it'll fit through other doorways if it won't fit through this doorway it becomes lawn art well huzzah and hooray three cheers and a tiger for me uh, to quote the genie with the light brown hair and if you know that reference please leave it in the comments below and I will be sure to give you a no prize but uh, yes it came through the door without any problems just a little bit of caution on the nose and uh, well now that I know how to go in and out he kind of has to face in as he goes it should be no problem uh, here he sits for the rest of the day and, and it'll probably be a few days before I get back to him and then get his his uppers in and uh, start refining these joints but that's a heck of a lot of work for one weekend and uh, life is so much the better for it now I like the smell of Bondo and, and the great outdoors as much as the next guy is probably more probably more than the next guy but it's time to switch gears and get a little bit more work done on him on the pod today now it's a little after three I'm not gonna get as much as you know the song by now you can sing along if you'd like I'm not gonna get as much done as I had hoped but uh, what I am going to do now is finish doing the black refining on this earmuff and then I'm gonna go around the whole kit and do the silver bits and there are silver bits around these holes here and there's silver inside all of this get those silver bits done and maybe even the red there's red that goes back here i have to check my references again to see what other areas are painted red but i want to get all of that done so that all that is left is the white touching up against all of these colors and if i can get that much done today uh that'll be a happy day for me and then that will leave it ready for decaling but let's finish up the black on this earmuff first okay i've got the black touched up and i was starting on the silver and i was going to use the uh, tamiya chrome silver but it's just not laying on as flat or not flat i want it to be bright but i mean it's not laying on as easily as i would like to with a small brush so i think i'm going to have to go model master chrome silver just for those touch-ups like I did these rings in here so uh, I'm gonna let all of this paint dry for a bit before I come back to doing that okay this is gonna sound like a cop-out but it really isn't meant to be one um, I'm finding that after having worked all day on big heavy things where there are a lot of lugging and tugging is uh, uh, been required that I'm having trouble with the fine smaller motions that I really want to do to do the fine detail painting on this. I, I would liken it to, um, I don't know what it is. It's like you're painting really broad strokes and your arm is used to doing that all day and you're, you're used to lifting up and, and you know, heavier weights and then all of a sudden you're asked to sit down and do something t tiny and fiddly and uh, my hands are shaking. I, I don't want to screw it up so uh, I'm going to call it quits on the pod today. Didn't get as far as I wanted to. I'm sorry. I know that's a familiar song to y'all. But uh, at this stage, I really don't want to screw it up. And I feel that I might just, if I continue, I might end up spending more time patching up my, my mistakes than actually putting new paint on. So what I'm going to do, give you a final look at where we are with the pod. And it's very, very close to being finished. Okay, here is our friend the pod, and I'm down to putting the silver highlights around here. And what I was doing was that my I was painting the black, and my hand was jerking to the side and smearing black paint over the white, and that's not doing anybody any good. So, uh, um, gonna call it quits for today. I might work on this during the week this week, and then have it ready for next week's report because. Uh, we're that close to being finished and I really don't want to take too much more time on it but look at that front window I've been finessing and fiddling and touching the ovalness of it to get the black just out where it needs to be and that's the kind of stuff I've been screwing up I you know touch a little bit and my hand would shake so uh, it's not worth it I'd like giving reports for y'all I'd like uh, I like to show you finished kits I like to do them in a, in a timely manner 
but uh, you don't need to see me screwing up. So uh, we're gonna call it quits on this today, and we're gonna blame uh, we're gonna blame Slimer, you know, 100 percent because I got infatuated with a new project. But we are oh so close to this that I don't I don't want to jeopardize it. And that's gonna bring us to the end of another work week. Uh, I blame Slimer for the uh, for the um, discombobulated nature of this week, and he, you know, poor Hopper didn't get anything done on it. Um, but got a lot of big scale work done, and like I said, I got to do that while the sun still shines and it's still warm enough outside to work. I could there's plenty of time this winter or this fall even to uh, work on the small stuff indoors. Got to do the big stuff while the dig while the big stuff can be done. It's what I call a primering weekend. If I had more kits set ready, I would have primered them too. So, pod not quite finished. Dang. Uh, Hopper completely ignored. And Slimer well on the way. So, uh, it was a good week, but it wasn't the week I wanted. So, until next week, when I promise we will get back to finishing the pod. Or, I'm probably, I might even have a finished pod to show you right off the bat. Uh, be good to each other and have a fun week and I will see you back here next time Ray take the left Egon take the right <laughs>